Well, Razorback fans, you finally got an addition out of the transfer portal for Razorback basketball. So how good is it or how good is he? Let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon from 4 to 6 on Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Hope everybody had a wonderful Easter weekend, as it was a busy one. Uh, you know, LSU series, you had some spring practice, you had... All right, the Arkansas Derby going on, too, as well as the NCAA tournament. And uh, a lot of things that uh, were going to go down uh, from scheduled stuff, but at least on the basketball side of things, Razorback fans finally got you some good news, got you something that you probably wanted to hear about or was waiting on to see exactly when this would all go down. And lo and behold, you got a commitment out of the transfer portal, and it is a nice one. UMass transfer forward Josh Cohen, 6'10", 220 pounds out of Lincroft, New Jersey. This is all according to NattyStateSports.com. He's a native of that land, and he provides a lot of scoring, and uh, which is honestly having a pretty bare front court. But this is his one season left of eligibility. He only has one year. He's a six-year senior. And um, for those of you who may have been uh, listening to or following us along at Natty State Sports, uh, had a great little sit-down interview with him, and he was talking about it. And uh, he had a visit actually on or going to Notre Dame, but uh, decided that uh, Arkansas was the place that he wanted to be. He's also considering Xavier and Penn State as well as others. Uh, this past season, he was a first team All Atlantic 10 selection. He averaged 15.9 points, 6.8 rebounds, 1.7 assists per game, shot 54.5% from the field, and career highs from three, shooting 34.5% and 70% from the free throw line. Uh, Ken Palm, for those of you who follow along with that, uh, ranked him as one of the top five players in the Atlantic 10 and finished among the top 30 players in the country in fouls drawn per, six, uh, per 40 minutes, which was at 6.7, and the free throw rate being at 69.7. So he recorded four double-doubles on the year and dropped a season high 28 points on three separate occasions against Portland-owned Dominion as well as Loyola Chicago. And so uh, they were they were after this guy pretty heavily. And you can watch, uh, again, some, uh, some of his highlights and everything on NattyStateSports.com. But, again, he started uh, at St. Francis, where he was a two-time All-League selection and NEC Co-Player of the Year. I hate those co-players. Where he averaged 22 points and 8.5 and rebounds per game. He's also the most improved player in the NEC uh, leading up into that point. Now, this is what is significant. It says against nationally ranked or power conference opponents last season, because let's be honest, that's what you want to know of how he was able to perform in those particular settings. He went for 19 points and seven rebounds and a win over West Virginia, had 10 points and three boards versus uh, Georgia Tech, and just missed a double-double with 15 points and nine rebounds against Dayton. So he was the guy that was on the team that everybody was going to have to, you know, be on the lookout for, and uh, you know, every time that they went up against that that team in particular at UMass, he was the guy that was going to get the ball. He was the guy that was going to be arguably their best player, and he was still able to get some really good numbers. And ESPN's Jeff Borzello has Cohen ranked as the number thirteenth available transfer, and on three dot com currently has him listed as the fifth best center out of the portal. So, saying all of that to say this, it is a nice addition for the Razorback basketball team to get Josh Cohen. It's a nice addition. Now, he's already scored 1,626 points, grabbed 6,745 rebounds, has 18 double-doubles, and again, being six foot 10, 220 pounds, uh, looks like he's got a little bit of a skill set there, too. So, you know, I'm not going to try to sit here and pretend that, oh, well, by jo getting Josh Cohen, now suddenly everything's back on track. This team's a Final Four team. Like, you know, they still, at this point in time, with his commitment, are sitting at 
five current scholarship players. Five. You still have Tremont Mark, Caleb Battle, Trevin Brazil, as well as Bayfall on the roster as we speak. So I guess you could technically at least put a starting five together <laughs> at this point. So they're still hitting the, the portal hard. I know they're going to have some visits coming up. And, you know, the more and more that the portal is is going through the process of what it is going through right now, I know Arkansas is going to be high on the list for a lot of players. And uh, Muss is getting a little bit of a jump on it, too. So what's nice about this is not only just the player that you got, but what's nice about this is that, you know, with all this crap that was going around about, you know, the uncertainty of the program, I think this is finally starting to put all the matters to bed. Because uh, you don't get a commitment, you're not you're not having a visit, and you're not going through all this process if you're not staying at Arkansas. So it certainly looks like uh, this is going to be the case, and uh, I'll be curious about it too. Because with a type of player like that, usually what Muss has done out of the transfer portal, there hasn't really been many players that are kind of like this skill set. Um, you know, that, and I think that when it comes to some front court guys, and you know, the, I guess this past year was probably the time, or maybe even last year was the time that you had some of your, your biggest size. I mean, I know last season you had the Mitchell Twins plus Brazil and Graham. Those were kind of your four. Brazil got hurt, and uh, Mikel Mitchell really wasn't a factor for the most part. And then this past year, uh, you had Makai Mitchell and Jalen Graham. And then you also had Trevin Brazil, who you know, had to deal with injury too. And that was kind of pretty much – it <laughs> when it came to the front court you had some guys that could maybe play bigger at times when they needed to you know like a jeremiah davenport but uh you know and i guess you had bayfall but again he never played so being able to add in a guy who's experienced uh, who's skilled uh, is going to be huge especially for somebody who uh seems to have had arkansas early on his list and being able to be a, an adult. I mean, you're talking about a kid that's going to be, what, 24 years old roughly uh, this year. So that's that's a nice little building stone. Now, I'm not saying that all these players are going to come back still that are on the roster. We haven't heard one way or the other. But I fully believe that if they pulled out the huge get of being able to have Mark and Brazil and Battle back especially, I mean, even if Bayfall wants to come back, I, I mean, again, it's, I'm still kind of surprised he's not announced anything. But that's still a pretty solid core group uh, to be bringing back. And I really think with those three guys in particular, uh, with the talent that they have and the ability, because all of them, like, here's, what's, here's the thing, folks. I know last year was last year, but each one of those players, especially the three with Mark Brazil and Battle, showcased that they could go for – 20, 30, or even 40 points on any given night. Like, they, they prove that. I think all of them are capable three-point shooters. I think all of them are capable free-throw shooters. I think all of them offensively have, have different skill sets to provide. I, I really believe that. Now, defensively, you know, I think that's not only an individual thing that needs to be improved upon, but it's also something that, uh, you know, Muss has, has really hammered home. And who knows, maybe – some of these guys that he's going to bring in, which I know this is more of an offensive player. We'll see what his defense is like. Uh, I know that that's going to be a heavy focus. So don't be surprised if you see some players that they get out of the transfer portal, which I think I talked about this maybe last week or the week before, that don't really have the inordinate offensive numbers, which is okay. Um, I think that more so than anything, you need dudes that love playing defense, are really good at defense, and know their role defensively. You know, you need those... Trey Wades, uh, you, you need those guys that can just be those types of players. And so, uh, and, and again, for this, from what I've heard, I've heard that, you know, Makai Mitchell's still trying to find a way to get another year of eligibility. I don't know if that's going to be with Arkansas. I don't know if that's even going to happen. But, you know, I, would you, I'd take Makai Mitchell back if Muss wanted him back and if everybody else wanted him back. So point is, is that, it's nice to have some good news. It's nice to have some good news with basketball and the program and where it's at right now. Uh, the uncertainty I know was crazy, but uh, this is definitely a nice little start for Arkansas and for Eric Musselman and trying to get the Razorback basketball program back to 
where they need to be because uh, this last year does never, just never needs to happen again. Folks, all right, I got to tell you about Game Time, the Game Time app. What is great about it is that we all are looking for tickets to things, you know, whether it's concerts or sporting events or you know, anything like that. It's tough sometimes to find the best deals when it comes to buying those tickets, but that's what a place like Game Time is always going to help you out with. Uh, they always have last-minute deals where you can save up to 60% off buying last-minute for all these different events like sports, comedy shows, concerts, theater, etc. Uh, they also have flash deals where you can save even more with an exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Uh, All-in pricing, which is one of the best things about it because toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. So whenever you have that feature turned on and you're looking at tickets, that's the price. Uh, no more, no less, no hidden fees. That's the price. And it just makes it as easy and as convenient for you as possible. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Don't the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College. That's promo code Locked On College for your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the account and redeem code Locked On College. That's L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. For $20 off, download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price. Guaranteed. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, uh, some more good news for Razorback fans over the weekend is not only in baseball were you able to defeat the LSU Tigers in a series, but you swept the LSU Tigers in a series. And it's really, really hard to beat that, man. Uh, I know that this Razorback baseball team is really good. Uh, the expectation is extremely high. Uh, they are the number one team for a reason, and they're going to have a target on their back each and every time. But Arkansas continues to find ways to win. Find ways to win. Thursday's game was really good. I was able to be in attendance for that one, and... I mean, Hagen Smith's just awesome all the time. I mean, he's, he's just that dude. And so it's always good to see him just being so constant with that. And you had Bill, Big Will McIntyre come in late and uh, do, do some really good things too. So uh, just, uh, just an overall really well-performed, great game. And then Friday night's game, folks. I mean, is, is there anything better than that? I, I, you go to extra innings. It's a hard-fought game between two really good teams. Because that's the thing I want to reiterate. Uh, LSU is sitting at, at, which is crazy to think. It's a crazy thing at this point in time. They're 2-7 and seven in conference play. 2-7. and seven. They're 0 for in their first three series. So it, it, but the still, like we know how good the SEC is. We know how highly talented and highly competitive it is. So that's what makes this even that much more impressive. But in that second game of the series, you have an, a great battle between teams. And you, know, you have great defensive plays. Uh, Peyton Stovall, I can't. I know I bring him up all the time, but you, I can't say enough about that kid. That guy was just locked in, and I know that a little. It means a little bit more to him too, being a Louisiana kid, uh, to be going up against LSU. But man, that was just a, a great performance by him, offensively and defensively. Uh, you know, you had some other offensive pieces that came in and hit and hit some big time. Uh, there was a home run or just getting guys in and scoring and and everything. But man, just. That game had it all, and Arkansas was able to walk it off in incredible fashion. As uh, uh, you, you just had a, a, a great hit there, uh, I believe it was Hudson White, uh, to get the walk off. But the thing is, is like I, I, I tweeted this out when Arkansas was able to win that game too, and it sounds cliche, but it's really true. Like you know, when you have two really good teams going up against each other. High caliber teams, teams that are championship caliber, what you know, whatever. Like, especially in baseball, especially in the regular season, and especially in a three game series. So many of these games are close. I, I mean, it's incredible to think about Arkansas's uh, where they've been so far in the season, and, and thinking about how they've only got one loss. Right, they're eight and one in conference play. They're eight and one, folks, and you know that's great within itself. But if you think about some of these close games that they've had. Uh, not against Missouri because they suck, but think about Auburn. Six to five was a one-run game, or one to nothing was the first game. Six to five, one-run game. They did lose game two by two runs, but they beat LSU seven to four in the first game, but came late. Four to three in 
10 innings on a walk-off by Hudson White there in game two, and then seven to five. Arkansas had to come back and come from behind in order to win that one. Uh, it just shows you the margin of error is so small in these games. So small. And in that LSU game, it's always about who blinks. Who blinks and who takes advantage. Because the great teams, the great teams will always take advantage of a team that blinks first. And LSU did where that shortstop ended up having a uh, pretty crucial error there that was able to get the guy on base at first when Hudson White came up, hit that ball for a double, and scored him all the way from first. Uh, that was a crucial mistake and ended up being a difference in the game. I mean, Arkansas could have and may have still won regardless of that particular play, but that's the type of mistake that you have to be able to take advantage of if you're going to be a great team, and Arkansas did. So the excitement it continues to build for this squad, and it is far from over, folks. It is so far from over. Uh, you got Ole Miss coming to town uh, this weekend in a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. It's going to be another great one in Fayetteville. But that one, you definitely, you know, Ole Miss is capable of beating you. On the road against Alabama, Alabama's a much improved team. You got that coming up next. We don't always know South Carolina on the road's tough. Florida at home is definitely going to be tough. Kentucky's becoming a really good team, a top 25 team. Mississippi State is top 25. And A&M is one of the best teams in the SEC right now, too. So you still got all of these series in front of you, and you all know this. I mean, you know, I know you all know this. So I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. The reason I'm bringing it up, though, is because you have to remember that you are going to have games like this. And against LSU is a prime example where it's going to be by the smallest amount of error, the smallest margin that you'll ever see in a game. And there's going to be times that Arkansas loses those games. Arkansas is going to lose a game where they make a mistake and the other team takes advantage of it. And, you know, being able to win a series in the SEC 2-1 to one is incredible. And sweeping is awesome and really tough to do, too. But I, I hate to be this guy, but if you think about just what, between, especially, in fact, forget the Auburn or Missouri series, but between the Auburn and LSU series, folks, in those games, you're 5-1, and one, and you are literally, what, four or five plays away from losing both of those series? And, and like, you could be sitting at, I mean, against Auburn, crying out loud, you, could, you were this close to getting swept. And LSU, you were this close to, to losing the series. So, I mean, it's just so tiny of a of margin of error. So, give credit where credit is due. This Arkansas team is fun. They're tough. Their culture is incredible. Uh, pitching's great. The offense is coming around. They're clutch in clutch situations. Uh, you know, they just, they're, they're, as of this point in time, they're living up to the expectation. They got to keep it going. I don't expect them to win every, every SEC series. They, they could lose this one Ole Miss this weekend. And people, I'm sure, will be a very non-overreactionary. But it's just been really great to see how this team has come along and the greatness that they are able to provide each and every time out. Folks, i got to tell you about Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the TV Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV, whether you're watching it for the opening weekend of baseball or for the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos for your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro sports leagues and college conferences as well. So Fire TV lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on all the latest world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check it all out. Fire TV channels and on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you absolutely should. Trust me on this. So to learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, uh, we'll have some more football practice stuff hopefully this week to, to talk about throughout the spring, but I did want to bring up something with the NCAA tournament. This is a question, like, I'm going to be honest, like seeing uh, the final four teams essentially be set and uh, seeing Alabama as one of those teams is pretty pretty pathetic and horrible because, uh, I mean, there's not really 
I, I don't. I mean, this is a fan base that hasn't exactly uh, been the most deserving. I like to talk trash to them, though. They're all they're all good fun. But either way, uh, they're in the Final Four, and I, I had a buddy of mine who's a non-SEC fan. He, he's got a fan uh, fandom from a, a Big Ten school, so uh, just keep that into perspective. But he always would give me a hard time if I ever rooted for the SEC or ch- started the chant, the SEC. He thinks it's dumb when people do the SEC chant. And, you know, I, I can kind of see it from an outsider, but it is ironic and kind of funny how, and I'm not saying everyone's like this, it's just me, but it is funny how I will at times root for teams in the SEC in college football. I, I'll be honest, like in the national championship game and the college football playoff, more often than not, I will root for the SEC team. I uh, always rooted for Bama, I always rooted for Georgia, and it's not because I was like, I, I put on a Georgia hat and was like, you know, Go dogs, woof. Like I, it was just, you know, most of the time in these games and in championships of pro sports or college sports, if your team's not in it, you still find the team that you end up rooting for. It's just, it's just common. But I, I would usually do it for that. I usually wouldn't root for LSU when they were in the championship games. I, I wouldn't usually root for Auburn. But then even in some other bowl games too, like I would root for, uh, you know, teams like Kentucky uh, in, in most cases. Uh, I would root for, you know, a, a team like Mississippi State. You know, if they were in a bowl game or South Carolina, other than when Shane Beamer got there. But anyway, it's not always just consistent of like, oh, yeah, well, I root for the SEC teams on point A, point B, point C. It's kind of just been whenever the whoever the coach is and how it's gone and all that. Now, I'll bring that up because uh, this is probably going to sound weird, but it's true. I only do that in football. In basketball and in baseball, I root against every other SEC team. I want them all to lose. And I, I even say that, feel like that in every sport, every single sport, I want them to lose. And that's a pretty weird thing if, you, if you're just hearing that, you're like, oh, how does that make sense? And I, I guess I look at it where, you know, some people might bring up where it's, well, Arkansas is never going to be in a championship in football more than likely. So, you know, you find other teams root for because it's just like you're almost like living vicariously through them. Maybe there's that, a, a little bit of an element of that. Um, but I, I just think that because in SEC football, the brand of it is so great. And, you know, it was always a time where you got, for a long time, it's not that way anymore, but just for a long time, you know, the big, I always felt like the Big Ten felt like they were better than everybody else. And, uh, you know, the Big 12 with the big Texas schools forever uh, felt like they were better than everybody else. And even the Florida schools in the, of the ACC and then the Pac-12 of the West Coast elite is like the, the Southeast Conference, you know, up until – it really got going and was really becoming great pretty consistently in football. Uh, you know, it kind of got disrespected a lot of times. And, you know, nobody really looked at it as, in, you know, the same way that they did it as other schools of other conferences. So it's just kind of camaraderie of, like, you know, we're not chanting SEC because we're just huge Georgia fans. It, it, it's chanting it as, like, yeah, y'all don't – y'all aren't to the level of what we do down here in this conference. But, again, it's just in football – for me in that I don't do that in basketball absolutely not and I don't do it in football or baseball absolutely not so I know it sounds weird sounds inconsistent but it makes sense in my mind which a lot of things make sense in my mind but doesn't actually mean mean to make sense so just want to explain that to you appreciate everybody listening in and watching into the locked on Razorbacks podcast be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play you can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbor Show for any questions comments concerns that you may have and we will keep it going from there same podcast time same podcast channel Tomorrow afternoon, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.